Hello everyone and welcome to another video. How is everyone doing? Well, in today's video, we are finally able to play ranked again. And for our first game, we had Volibear banned, so I believe it is as if the game is asking me to play another champion. And since we performed really well in our experimentation with Nunu, this game will be again around a Nunu jungle. So as the game starts, we have the most awkward encounter in the game. We are randomly invading, and sadly, unlike Volibear, I don't like to invade as much as I do with Nunu, unless I have my level 3. And if I do invade, I prefer that it is done just in a 1 versus 1 situation, because our goal is to steal camps and not kill the enemy jungler. But sadly, after the Nunu reworks, it is hard to control Nunu. For players that are not familiar with the old Nunu, the old Nunu used to have a snowball. You'd simply walk up to lanes, Snowball some enemies, slow them around 60%, and then hope that your teammates have enough damage to kill. But then, you know, there's a mini game where you keep running with the ball and die in a very noob way. In this specific game, we are going with Tank Nunu, because I prefer to play Tank Nunu more than AP Nunu, simply because you provide your team with the tankiness and feel they need to carry. Of course, the lack of damage will be considerable since the current meta around all junglers is about doing significant damage so that they can win duels and skirmishes. So, as Nunu, the play is simple. We will be very tanky, to the point that no one can kill us, and we can simply walk up into the middle of the enemy team, take the objective, and run away. This is our major goal. But at the early stage of the game, we are somewhat useless. We don't have enough HP to tank damage, and we don't have enough damage to kill anyone. So, my advice to you, if you don't have your allies around, simply run away. If not, you should play on your footwork, and have the ability to dodge enemy spells since in the early game, your only tankiness will come from runes and somewhat from your bite as it lets you sustain damage until you can get the objective. Make sure that you bite the correct target. For example, I believe that you heal more from monsters than you do from champions. Also, playing around your abilities is key here. Since your snowball requires some element of surprise, make sure to use your snowball only to interrupt an enemy champion or to get the instant aftershock resistance buff. Well, there is no way to sugarcoat it. Vladimir in mid lane is one of the safest champions in League of Legends. It is almost impossible to manage to kill him properly, and I don't know why or how, but his pool is a very broken ability. Once he gets level 6, it's a totally different story. But sometimes we get lucky and do manage to kill him, even if that leads to trading kills which is fine. I was hoping that our E would manage to root him, even if he is in his pool, but sadly, such an interaction doesn't work as I intended. Now for the second Grubs fight, it was a little bit awkward because I decided to go for a kill before starting the fight. I wanted to kill Gragas, and that would give us an advantage. It was a two versus one situation, but the funny part is that Vi did the same thing with our mid laner, so we were back again to a two versus two situation. It seems that the good call is always to go for the kill first, and then collapse. The other funny part is that the timer for the camp was almost running out because we were starting around Herald spawn time. We also had a hidden advantage because we just needed one Voidling. We didn't need the whole camp, just one to get the buff. Luckily for us, we got it just by the slightest margin before the Herald spawned. By this stage, we are starting to get tanky. It's getting harder for the enemy team to kill us, and this situation will only get worse as we build more items. As a reminder, we are not here to deal damage. We are not here to one-shot anyone. We are simply here to create situations for the team to play around us as their tank champion. Nunu is one of those champions that is fun to play as long as you stay alive. Of course, you can go for the full AP Nunu build. It's similar to Volibear, just one build that works on a lot of champions. And Nunu is one of those champions because you get the instant slow and stun, which lets you keep rotating the shield from Fimble Winter as long as you want. The only advantage here is that even if you go with Undying Despair, you benefit more from it. As Nunu, you keep running around people, so you get the healing. Unlike Volibear, who needs to stay stuck on one champion to benefit from his bite. Now, we have a totally different gameplay here. The idea is that we should keep the game in a high-paced mode, and there are only two things that can happen. Either the plan will backfire, we'll make only bad plays, and we'll lose the game because we are reckless, or the enemy team will not be able to keep up, and will create an effect that is called disparity in formation. So. We are trying to stress the enemy team's perseverance in the game to the point where we can finish the game as soon as possible. Nunu is one of those champions that is made to speedrun League of Legends. As the score shows, we are a little bit behind, but I believe we're even because every fight was made around which team had their ultimates ready. And in this situation we had the advantage since we started the fight, 
at our ultimate and managed to catch the enemy off guard. My initial goal here was to use that as a setup so that we could get at least an inhibitor and prepare for the Baron fight. Even though the enemy team I believe has the better ultimates, we have the better players. So this game will be about who goes first and capitalizes on that to secure the Baron and try to close the game as soon as possible. Of course, the plan didn't go as expected. We only got a third crash with Harold sadly not damaging the inhibitor, and I believe that's enough for us so that we can set up Baron. The main reason we use Herald mostly in mid lane is to gain free vision. If you take mid lane first, you gain free vision because you force the enemy team to show up and you can ward the mid lane. This creates a huge advantage deep in their territory. Well, there is one downside to our build, and that is how hard it is to stack Fimble Winter. I think I should stop getting Winter's approach as my first item and instead go for it as a secondary item. Now, with Volibear, you can go for Frozen Gauntlet, but on Nunu, I'm still debating a better first item when going tank. Honestly, Winter's approach feels like a risky item in my opinion. With Aftershock, it's fine. But if I don't take Aftershock, it's hard to survive for 4-8 to eight seconds until I can start getting shields. That makes it feel clunky to rush as a first item. For now, I'm thinking about making it as my third item. But it's still debatable. I thought a full AP item, like Proto Belt, might work as a first item. That could be a good idea. But for now, it's still up for discussion, and I'm experimenting with it. On the other hand, I was also considering Hullbreaker as my first item on Nunu, but I feel that's a terrible idea because Nunu doesn't benefit much from his passive or any AD scaling except on his passive. I was also thinking about going for Unsealed Spellbook, but I believe Aftershock gives us more utility than having unlimited spells. In this situation, against their composition, the crucial thing is that you need to start fights and stay alive to secure objectives. In this instance, I'm playing off my top side because he's been very aggressive since the start of the game. Gragas, with his Phase Rush build, is incredibly hard to catch and even harder to kill. Phase Rush is a very broken rune on any champion that have some hard CC with a dash, and the fact that you can't chase someone even if you're sped up is highly questionable. I'm still wondering why this rune hasn't been nerfed yet, but it's totally fine. Finally, now we are ready for the fight. As you can see on the minimap. Both sides decided to push for the side lanes, which is understandable since everyone is preparing for the Drake call. But the weird part is that the enemy team is really trying to fight me for some unknown reason. Maybe I was ganking too much? It's something I've noticed in a lot of games. If you gank a lot, you'll be chased a lot. But sadly for them, I'm already prepared for this situation. In this specific moment, I'm running Aftershock, even though it's just two items in. And I sometimes consider this rune as a first item because it gives so much resistance. It's like a mini Jack Show steroid, even if it's only for a few seconds. The funny thing is, I don't believe I can kill anyone in a one versus one, but neither can they kill me. And once I get Spirit Visage, I'm confident it'll be nearly impossible for them to take me down. Here's a hint to know if your build is solid against the enemy composition. For example, if you have 4k HP, and after a fight, you've taken around 8k damage, Check the post-game damage chart. If you see that the damage taken is roughly 50% AP and 50% AD with a little bit of true damage, it means your build is well-rounded and you did your job. The only issue is making sure you don't die in the wrong places or at the wrong time. Otherwise, don't expect any build to make you 100% unkillable. That doesn't exist. And even if it did, it wouldn't be a balanced build. Now, the game is dragging on much longer than expected because the enemy team is playing very passively. In situations like this, you need to take the initiative, push mid lane, and make sure the enemy team follows you or is out of position so you can take objectives. In this scenario, I have a strong feeling that Hullbreaker as a third item is the best choice in low ELO. Against champions that tend to chase you, this item is perfect for tilting them. If you want to win, you need to end the game as soon as possible. And if you go for something more damage oriented, you won't be able to do much if they are turtling in their base. What you need to do is stand next to super minions or cannon minions and let them do the work while you chill on the side. You can't take this lightly because it's not once or twice that I've managed to turn the game by simply standing next to the wave, not necessarily beside my allies, even though I do think you can still survive longer with their help. But sometimes they make misplays, which doesn't help and makes the situation feel like bigger brain calls on our part. In this situation, we do have someone helping us secure the objectives. But remember, dragging the game out and giving the enemy team a chance to come back is risky. As a jungler, if you extend the game longer than it should be and lose, that fault is totally on you. So, in my opinion, we should have already ended the game. If my teammate didn't follow that call, it was their mistake. And if we end up messing around the mid-inhibitor position, well, that's on us. In this situation, I really didn't want to fight for the Baron because I needed about 200 gold to finish my spirit visage. With that item, I would be much stronger. However, my team wanted to catch the enemy, and I knew that if I wasn't there with them, 
it would backfire hard. Let's say you're in a fight and you're taking all the damage for your carry. If you survive with 100 health, you shouldn't go in and die. There's another option, and that's to run it down. It's that simple. If you can push down mid lane correctly, you'll give your team a better chance than just dying. You'll give them an opportunity to outplay the enemy, and even with 1 HP, your presence will force the enemy to deal with you while your team takes towers or objectives. From this philosophy, I've been thinking about trying Nico Jungle with on-hit Hullbreaker and running down lanes with minion waves. The problem is, if you take the tower, your picture will show on the announcer, which can reveal your position. Since I'm hesitant to this approach, I haven't tried that strategy yet, but it's something I want to experiment with in the future. As you can see, the situation is similar here. The team wanted to make a fight happen, and after a lot of back and forth, I realize that my biggest weakness against their composition is Ignite. If I get ignited during the team fight, I'm most likely going to die. Otherwise, I'll be fine. So now it's all about good positioning and making the right calls. Another thing to keep in mind is that if I can dodge their abilities and Bard's ultimate, my ultimate will be charged to full capacity. These are important factors to consider during the fight. Also, similar to any other situation where I'm engaging, if I get stuck on an enemy with no CC or burst damage, I'll be able to survive their attacks through sustained damage. This build is particularly effective against casters. In this instance, the situation was about taking the hits and matching my rotations with theirs, so the damage difference really came down to minimal damage. Luckily, the team came through strong, and we managed to close the fight. If we'd lost that fight, the enemy team would have been able to end the game, and we would have lost due to Graga's split push. As you can see in the last play of the game, sometimes, Random plays from random people work out in your favor, and that's what happened here. So as always, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, drop a like, and leave a comment. Until next time, thank you for watching, and peace.